okay so first of all yeah we have got this uh, we, i made two folders one where i'm writing the front end code one where i'm going to write the back end code and uh, the front end code request.html i've created a page i have got script src i've added this and i will add my own uh, script uh, also uh, somewhere here okay and uh, so what i'm going to do is uh, as the axios model says axios.get to a particular url and then it is a promise based api so if you have not covered the promise uh, based uh, you know sections concurrency and uh, other things in this course definitely cover that first so you will understand the syntax so i'll do uh, axios.get and i'm going to write this url http uh, json placeholder dot tipico.com slash users and this returns me basically a promise so uh, inside the promise uh, i get the response uh, then i get response which uh, i can do something with that and if there is an error i get uh, of course an error uh, which then i can maybe do something like you know console dot error i pass this error into that now, if I, when I get this response, so let's see what we can do with that response. So console.log uh, response if I do, uh, and if I just load this page, now this has an empty body right now, it does not have anything. So <clears throat> uh, let's uh, try this out. Let's uh, open a live server uh, on this page, and uh, hopefully this should work. Uh, I will go to uh, my web console and see if, uh, oh sorry, I made a typo, I think. Uh, Sort of like response yeah so apparently i get this object in response the biggest thing to see here is that if i go to my network tab in my browser uh, i would see that you know um, let me just uh, reload this page with uh, you know delete all the requests and just reload this page once so as you can see uh, originally my html page gets loaded first and then the Axios file gets uh, loaded from uh, the uh, the unpackage.com URL. That's uh, because uh, I have done the script as thing. Now, the interesting thing that happens next is an H XHR request happens. XHR stands for the XML HTTP request. So Axios internally is using XML HTTP request because that's the only way we can make Ajax calls uh, from the browser, like without refreshing the page, making a new call to some place. Okay and uh, <clears throat> we uh, we get uh, something like you know uh, uh, we have this request being made to json placeholder slash users we get this response uh, here and if i go to my console this response uh, has got uh, you know something called data and this data contains this array of users so let's say if i want to uh, put all this data into my uh, page i can do something like uh, you know instead of console.log response i can do um, um, for let uh, user um, of uh, response dot data i can do uh, let uh, div equal to uh, document dot create element so I'll create a div for each user and I'll do like something like, you know, uh, div dot uh, add text content equal to uh, user dot uh, username and uh, append this to my page uh, document dot body dot append child and pass this uh, div down there. Now if I do that, uh, if I reload the page, um, so as you can see, it fetches the usernames and they are all appended into my uh, website like this okay so um, if you're using uh, jquery uh, in your website then of course you might uh, prefer to use dollar dot get function because jquery already has a, a easy way to do these kind of things but uh, this website I have not used any other library so you could be using maybe react or Vue.js or angular or anything and Axios works perfectly with any other library. So you don't need to use jQuery just to make requests because jQuery is a heavy library. 
Uh, Axios is a much more lightweight library. In fact, if you go to the network tab, we can just check out how much uh, it took to download uh, Axios itself. Uh, just uh, remove all this and yeah. So Axios itself is just uh, 5 KB in size, whereas jQuery is 98 KB. So uh, we can probably use uh, Axios uh, only to do our network request jobs. And then when the data has arrived, we can just show them on our page or you know whatever you want to do uh, about that, uh, right? Uh, if you want to of course uh, we have discussed in our course that using inner html is not a uh, good option because inner html takes more time to render but still just to show it as an example in this i can do something uh, for you guys is uh, like this div dot uh, inner html equal to and uh, let me just uh, create some inner html for this part so maybe you know uh, uh, this div has uh, an uh, h2 uh, so let me just uh, put some h1 tag here users yep so h2 and uh, user dot uh, name and then uh, we might have a div uh, further inside this uh, we might uh, want to write stuff like I don't know what are, what are the data that uh, we are getting from here um, yep, yep so uh, everybody has a name they have a email ID so maybe you can have like email and write their email ID there user dot uh, email like this so now I think yeah so you make this request uh, as you can see yeah so everybody's name and their email IDs get printed on the page like this um, you can take this uh, response and do whatever you want with that not necessarily print it to the page it could be used for some other purposes it might be used uh, to store into local storage or it might be used inside you know inside redux if you're using react inside vuex if you're using vue.js uh, inside uh, you know it might be used inside angular as your service for data fetching so this is very generic in nature you can use this response wherever you want to this is a promise so you can async await it also if you uh, want to okay and uh, so i think that's pretty much it what you can do in uh, front end with axios uh, we will take a look at what we can do uh, on a back end as well it's not going to be any different it's going to be pretty similar to this